Welcome back. In this video, you will learn about the prone instability test, also known as the pit test. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe what the pit test measures, instruct a patient in their role in the performance of the test, position a patient appropriately on the examination table, recognize the need for monosegmental force application at a single level, identify the correct positions to apply force, apply the correct level of pressure, interpret the patient's response as positive or negative at each level, assess the patient's overall response to the test and score it appropriately, and recall the strengths and limitations of this test for the diagnostic process. And now, Kyle Kiesel will show you how to perform the PIT test. Hi, my name is Dr. Kyle Kiesel. I'm a physical therapist and a researcher, and I've been involved in low back pain research really my entire career, and I've identified those patients with multifidus dysfunction. We have a variety of clinical tests that we utilize to identify those patients, and, and one of those tests is called the prone instability test. So we're gonna go through and take you step by step on how to do the PIT test, prone instability test now. So Scott, come on in, we got a patient here, and, and the first thing, of course, is positioning. So we're gonna uh, position the patient over the table, and we shoot for ASIS right at the edge of the table. The angle between the patient's back and their lower limbs will depend on how tall the patient is and the height of your exam table. Ideally, this should be about 45 degrees. More important than the angle of the legs is that the patient's spine is in a neutral position. If there's too much lordosis, you run the risk of a false positive test. When I do this test and I see that there is excessive lordotic curve of the lumbar spine, then I raise the table or get the patient to increase the angle between their legs to ensure that they are in that neutral lumbar position. Okay, that's number one. And it's okay or we want him actually to hold on because what we're going to end up doing in this position is doing some PA glides, which we'll go through in detail at rest with his legs relaxed. And then when he lifts his feet a couple inches, it activates the muscles. So the muscles come on and then we, we repeat the test. So relax down. So the idea is uh, uh, we're going to do posterior to anterior, this uh, PA glide. So we're gonna glide each segment of the lumbar spine and we're looking for pain. If you're used to manual medicine and you have some uh, skills with that, this may be very familiar to you. Or if this is brand new, we'll just talk you through how to do the glide. It's probably the hardest part of, of the test. To identify the proper starting level, First, we'll identify the iliac crest and come back around to the midline. When we do that, we know that we should be between the L4 and L5 spinous process. It doesn't matter if you decide to start at L5 and work your way up to L1 or count up to L1 and work your way back down. If you are performing this uh, test really for the first time, we suggest that you start at L1. It'll give you a good feel of learning how to perform the glides at the higher levels before you work to the lower levels where you're more likely to find a positive result. So we need to do a glide on each of the five segments, okay? So how are we gonna get there? Well, probably the easiest way is find the iliac crest, work your way to the center, and you're at that L4-5 space. And then I can just walk up and work my way up to L1, and then confirm that with just palpating along the rib and getting up to T12, and then I'm down at L1. The good news with this is, if you're a level too high, you start a level too low, no big deal. You're gonna keep going till you get down to the sacrum. So let's take our top level. Here's the key when we're doing this test. It's my contact position with my hand. I'm gonna be just off the pisiform of, of my wrist, and just in a little gutter off that in the hypothenar eminence. So spinous process, I'm pisiform, and then I slide toward me just a little bit. Now, I'm right over that segment, and I can push straight down to produce the glide. Keys to do that. I gotta get my elbow locked, because I need good leverage, so I'm not doing this. I got elbow locked. I take up the little slack first. So I'm gonna take up that superficial tissue slack, and then I'm gonna glide on the segment. And I produce the glide 
by just lowering my center of gravity. We say it comes from your core. And you gotta get just practice and get the hang of doing that. So I'm on the first level, I'm doing the glide, I'm looking for pain, any pain there. It says no, I go to my next level, find the spinous process, take up that slack, produce the glide. Any pain there? It says no, next level down, take up the slack, Produce the glide. Any pain there? He says, yes, that's painful. So we're on a painful segment. So I'm gonna leave my hand right there. I know this segment's painful. And with my hand in the same position, I'm gonna ask him to lift his feet off the floor just a couple inches. I'll feel the muscles come on, know now that they're active, and I'm gonna repeat my glide. So I lock my elbow, I reproduce the same glide. I then ask, any change in your pain? He says, yes. I say, is your pain better? He says, yes. Is your pain gone? He says, yes, okay? It's important here that you leave your hand in the same position. Don't move your hand. Stay right over the segment, and now we're going to go to the activation condition. So he's going to lift his feet off the ground, we say about five centimeters, just a couple of inches. You'll feel the entire posterior chain muscles activate. These muscles are now on, and I'm going to repeat the glide using the same amount of force. So a positive test is when there's pain in the rest condition that is abolished or substantially reduced in the activation condition. That suggests that when the muscles come on, because when you lift your feet, the muscles come on. When the muscles are on, they're controlling that segmental instability and the, and the pain goes away. So I do it at every level. So I've done that level. I've got a positive level. I'm going to keep going. I'll go to the next level, do my glide, next level down, do my glide, and then obviously I get down to the sacrum and I'm done. So it's, it's each of the five levels. Okay, the key points when you're performing the test, patient positioning. He's um, over the table, hips about a 45, that uh, flattens out the lumbar spine. If you're doing the test with the lordotic spine, there's a chance of some faults finding. So get them leveled out. Find your levels, again, pretty easy, and if you start too high or too low, you're actually okay. Pisiform on spinous. Be sure that you come just off the spinous process to get your point of contact. If you push pisiform right over spinous, it's bone on bone, every segment will be painful and you'll get a false finding. Perform your glide. Remember, you're gonna use your core. We're looking for pain that's present in the relaxed condition that goes away when he lifts his legs in the activation condition. That would be a positive pit test. Now that you have completed the actual test, it's important to put these results into context. A prone instability test is considered positive when at least one level has pain that can be resolved upon activation of the posterior muscles by lifting the legs. This means that there is a segmental instability that can be corrected if the muscle activation and coordination are resolved. The alternative outcomes are no painful levels or a level that was painful but didn't resolve with activation of the posterior muscles. And these outcomes do not necessarily rule out the presence of low back pain with motor control dysfunction. Various studies have shown that the prone instability test has high inter and intra tester reliability with kappa values as high as 0.87. This corresponds to over a 90% agreement between testers. Additionally, the test is well known to be a predictor for success with stabilization exercise programs. There is currently no evidence to suggest the instability is worse if more than one level tests positive. The important things to remember are to position the patient with a neutral spine and be careful to apply the PA glide at only, only one level at a time. The patient's response is important as their reduction of pain on muscle activation is what we are trying to establish. The prone instability test is one of the tools that can help you identify a patient with multifidus dysfunction. This can form part of your clinical workup to help you understand and identify those with chronic low back pain.